Good morning and welcome to Kellyville Church. It's fantastic to have you here with us today. And if it's the first time you've logged on, we are really happy that you've joined us. Over the past few weeks, a number of people have been returning to church and it's been so good to chat to people and to catch up. Look, it's not too late for you to come down today, put on your shoes, get in your car, pop on down. We'd love to see you and have a chat. Today, our children's pastor, Zan Lung, will be sharing on in the Live, Love, Serve series. Zan is an amazing woman and she's a woman of God and I can't wait to hear what she has in store and I know we're going to be blessed by the message today. Nothing 
Have you ever felt as if you're putting your money into a black hole when you give your weekly mission offerings? Maybe you should think about it more as dumping your offerings into the river, not to get rid of them, but to help mission flourish around the world. Mission offerings don't seem to get as much attention anymore, yet they're still vitally important to supporting work around the world. Think of your mission offerings as a river flowing through the entire world, providing life-giving water to help sustain the mission fields. You probably know countries and projects that are supported by part of your 13th Sabbath offering. But what about the regular mission offerings you give each week? Where do they go? What do they support? And what do they achieve? You may be surprised to learn that your weekly mission offerings help support the work of about 400 missionary families around the world. In fact, 70% of the weekly mission offerings each quarter helps to support overseas missionaries and the international work of the church. Appropriations from the General Conference to World Divisions, the Middle East North Africa Union Mission, and the Israel Field help these regions build and sustain mission activities in their territories, like water irrigating fields when there's not enough rain. The remaining money helps various institutions and agencies that serve the World Church. For example, it helps the compassionate medical mission work of Loma Linda University, the outreach of Adventist World Radio, and the humanitarian ministry of ADRA, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency. In recent years, millions of people from challenging areas of the world have found salvation in Jesus and have joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In 2018, every 22 seconds, someone became an Adventist, and every four hours, a new church was organized. Thanks to your offerings and the global mission focus, thousands of new congregations have been established in unreached areas and among new people groups. But after these new believers have been baptized, how are they nurtured? How do we make sure that their new faith is strengthened and they grow as disciples? Your River of Mission Offerings helps grow and sustain new work throughout the world. Please keep this life-giving river flowing. Thank you for your faithful weekly mission offerings and your continuing prayers for Adventist Mission. Please join us as uh, Rosemary and I lead in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have to come to you in prayer. And we thank you for the amazing promise that whenever two or three are gathered in your name that you are present. So whether we are at a physical location at church or via Zoom or wherever we are, we, we just want to thank you that right now we can sense uh, the holy presence of your spirit and we pray that as we bring ourselves to you our needs our humanness our frailties our joys and our challenges that all of us will have a sense of your presence with us today we honor you we praise you for the awesome god that you are father we come to you with the needs of our church I just want to pray over each family that we represent and this comes in all forms and shapes but we ask father that your mercy and your grace be poured out on our homes and i pray father over those who are parenting i pray for those who are actually caring for their parents i pray for those who are sick and i pray for our youth for our babies all of us, Lord, I know how much you love us. Where there is sadness and grief, Lord, I pray that you will bring peace and comfort. And where there is fear and anxiety, may there be assurance and joy. And where there are doubts and uncertainties, may your faithfulness be revealed powerfully. We trust you, loving Father, because you promised to never leave or forsake us. And so we leave those needs in your loving care. Father, as we reflect on the needs of our church moving forward, we thank you for the guidance that you will provide as we pursue this um, alignment with our school. Um, we have a vision, Lord, for a great model of 
evangelism, of impacting our community through our school, and we pray that you will provide wisdom as we move forward uh, with the plans in regards to staffing and finding the right personnel. Heavenly Father, um, our hearts are with our youth, you know, and the church has been very intentional in that sense, and we praise you for our leadership. We thank you for Pastor Martin, for Dreen, and for uh, DJ, and for the whole leadership uh, team uh, at Kellyville. And uh, Holy Father, we pray now as we are about to enter into further worship, and as the word is open, may your Holy Spirit open our hearts and our minds to receive what you have in store for us. And we also, Father, ask that you will indeed forgive all our sins uh, throughout the week, things that we are aware of and things that we even forget. But we thank you for the cleansing blood of Jesus that is sufficient and good for all our unrighteousness. And Father, we recognize your sovereignty, Lord. You reign over all the earth. And we ask that you may also reign in our hearts as we surrender to your will. Holy Spirit, continue to transform our lives so that we can represent you and advance your kingdom. So bless us today and anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
way self-control. What is self-control? Self-control is controlling yourself. Say if you really, really want something and you know you're not going to get it, controlling yourself is like not being sad about it or anything like that. It's like having control of what you're doing. Like if there's like a whole big thing of candy there and it's just looking at you and you, you know that you're not allowed to eat it, you have to control yourself to not take it and eat it. Um, to not eat the whole tub of ice cream. Yeah, same with me. It means um, you like, when you're angry, you don't like hurt pe people. Self-control is um, like learning how to um, like to take over these um, like if you like, get angry or if you're like naughty you've got to learn how to control those emotions or feelings or if like you're you're not paying attention or you're being really distractive like you've got to learn like self-control is knowing that when you're doing something wrong you know that you're doing something wrong and you've got to fix that it's when you want to um when someone's being mean to you you want to cut their finger off but you don't do it i have loved the explanations of the fruit of the spirit by our kids They've been so clear and simple, and today's especially, thank you, Zara. When we feel a certain way, we know it will hurt someone else, don't do it. That is self-control. I found this little car in the bottom of a box of toys here at church. This is not just a car, it's a transformer. And this little car transforms into Bumblebee. If you haven't seen the Transformers movies, everyone wants a bumblebee, a hero that listens and comes to your rescue and plays a great music playlist all at the same time. When I found this little car, it was not like this. It was mangled and twisted. And if you did not know that this was the coolest toy, you would have thrown it in the garbage thinking it was trash. Now, it took me a while, but we gently put Bumble back, Bumblebee back together. Have you ever felt like that? That your life is a mess, all mangled and twisted, and that you have no clue how to put yourself back together? You know, this toy looks fine from the outside, but when you start to play with it to move its part so it can become what it is designed to do, you find that the wheels fall off and somehow, somewhere, someone has not been gentle with this little car. They may have become frustrated with how long it takes to get it back together and just pulled it apart. There may have been a fight over the toy and it got ripped apart. God only knows how this toy got broken. If only they had stopped before this permanent damage was done. You know, 2020 has been a year where every time I turn around on the news, I feel like I'm seeing and hearing what this little car has gone through. Someone has tried to force something on someone else and the result has been permanent damage. Broken lives, broken home, broken hearts, broken countries, broken world. And if that was all that I listened to, I would be really depressed. That is why um, I love the Word of God and being in church community. We are in the series Live, Love, Serve a study of the spirit of the character of God, who God is and how he is and who he calls us to be by the power of his spirit in us. You know, we can talk about what the spirit does and what we should do, or we can take those words and experience them in relationship with Jesus, asking Jesus to make these words and their intention the framework of our day. Our kids from Treehouse have done these great skate decks with the fruit of the Spirit on them. Aren't they great? And while these look great, I can tell you that the kids are really keen to put wheels on these so they can be what they're designed to be. The fruit of the Spirit is all about action. When God is and how he is, who God is and how he is and who we are, 
when we listen and learn to live, love and serve in the spirit. And just like these little car and the decks, Jesus' spirit in us transforms us so we can be who we are designed to be. Some time ago, I was working with a class of four-year-olds. It was the best fun ever. And one of the things I was asked to do was to teach the story of creation to the kids. And at that time, the kids were doing exactly what I see a lot of us doing. When they had finished playing with something, they left it on the ground or threw it away. If they wanted something that someone else had, they would fight over it or create ways to get what they wanted. And if something was broken, they would just throw it out. Everything was messy. So we told the story of God creating out of love, making a home for everything, the stars and the trees and the birds and the animals and the clouds. The kids' bags had a home in their locker. The toys had a home on the shelf. The books had a home in the bookcase and the sand had a home outside in the sand pit, but somehow it was always inside. Everything had a home. Everything and everyone in the Garden of Eden was at home. And we were designed as God's children to take care of each other and the planet, to make sure that everything and everyone is at home. And this is what we are designed to do, take care of each other so everyone feels, knows that they are at home. And since the working out of that story in the kindy room, I've had a text written on a board from Psalms 90 verse 1 that says, Lord, you have been our home since the very beginning. You know, home is that safe place the place where we rest after the big adventure or the hard work of the day. It is the place where we relax and just be. Living a life filled with the Spirit shows that your home is in Jesus and everything about who the Spirit is shows the world, the people around us, how to find their way home. Now, from the very beginning, we were designed to live in love and serve looking around how our world, it seems the opposite is happening. You know, we are living in fear and gripping onto everything we can hold in case, you know, we run out. You know, perfect love drives out all fear. And if we are exhausted from what fear is doing, you know, it will kill us. Stop. Choose a new way. In fact, It's what we were designed for in the very beginning. Live in love. That's why living in fear hurts so much. It's not what we were designed for. We need to know who God is and who we are, to be at home with him, to help out, to serve and to give, 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 because God is abundantly generous and we can see his spirit in us when we do the same. You know, this is where we come to the last two virtues of the Spirit, the things that let us know this is Jesus here, and they are gentleness and self-control. The first Bible study that I chose to do was Beth Moore, Living Beyond Yourself, a Bible study of the fruit of the Spirit. And the following comes from the chapter on gentleness. Gentleness translated from the Greek word is pro I hate this, praotis, being, meekness, mildness, forbearance. Primarily, it does not denote outward expression of feeling, but an inward grace of the soul. Calmness toward God in particular. It is the acceptance of God's dealing with us, considering them as good, in that they enhance the closeness of our relationship with him. However, Praotis encompasses expressing wrath toward the sin of man, as demonstrated by the Lord Jesus. This meekness does not blame God for the persecutions and evil doings of men. It is not a result of weakness, but the activity of blessedness that exists in one's heart from being actively angry at evil. Priorities is in, in our language is complete surrender to God's will and way in your life. 
And the term basically means stop fighting with God. It is quite the opposite of weakness. Meekness and gentleness is the power and strength created from submitting to God's will. Gentleness is responsibility with power. Sounds kind of superhero-ish, right? Now, for me, gentleness is positioning myself to learn. You know, I wanted to know who God is and how could he still love us? And that love is supernatural. His plan has always been that we would live in that love. We just have to want to. We have to know we are not God and he is. If I were you listening to me right now, I'd say like, nice words, Zan, but how do I do that when my life is messy? Or it's so controlled, I've become my very own God ruling my very own kingdom. Now, these are the two extremes. We may find ourselves somewhere in the middle, but today, every day, we are invited to live in love. You know, let me tell you, it's a joyful place. That's how you know someone is in love, right? Where nothing can steal the peace, where we are kind and good and while we patiently wait for what the day brings, we are faithful and fight for each other with kindness and goodness and we are gentle and self-controlled. Why? Because God rules here, not us. How do we do this? Romans 12 verse 1 and 2 says, Place your life before God. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, Fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognise what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. You know, unlike the culture around us, always dragging us down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out in us, develops well-formed maturity in us. You will be changed. We will be changed from the inside out, transformed. I was like this little car. I came to church and I looked okay on the outside until I would get pulled in this direction and that and my brokenness would become evident. And in a protective reflex, I'd gather myself up and go hide somewhere until I felt safe to venture out again. And this kind of life is not fun and it's not resilient or creative. And it's a knee-jerk reaction to pain and hurt and it's exhausting. You know, I would want to serve and help, so I'd come out and try my best, you know, which was never enough. Then stuff would happen and I'd get hurt and then I'd go back to feeling bad and wonder why did I even try and I'd go back to licking my wounds and planning on becoming a hermit. A never-ending cycle of disappointment versus desire until I met Jesus and he said, let me help. Listen up, Sam. Just stop. I love you. Get to know me. You know, and I did for some time. Stop, that is. You may not remember, but I do. I had this moment where I felt the Spirit ask me, um, do you love me? And my instant response was, yes, but your church is weird. And the reply came straight back, I didn't ask you that. Do you love me? And from that time on, I had this beautiful time of living, looking for Jesus everywhere, and he didn't disappoint. But we had been away, and when I came home, you know, life happens, you know, you get back into the routine, and I slumped back into the old cycle of things. But I had experienced something beautiful, and I wanted that to continue So I decided to do a Bible study and checked out what was available and I had no clue what to do. So I chose the cover that I liked the best and it was this one. And I liked it because it had self-control in it and I thought, hey, I need more of that. But it was the very last chapter and I was like, you're kidding me, I have to do all of this to get to that? 
And the spirit said, settle down, Zan, just do one page at a time. And in the book, this study of the spirit, I got to know who God is and who I am and who I have been. And I have to tell you that there was times when I got up from this book and this book and I walked away because I did not like what I saw in myself. But love brought me back, you know, gently calling me to something beautiful. And love led me through to the very last page where I cried when it was done. Like, and I'm not a crier. You know, we have so much brokenness that is causing us pain. And God says, let my spirit help you with that. And he gently works his way in us, transforms us from broken to beautiful. The thing is, we have to want to and we have to choose to. This is self-control. Self-control stops. And in this study, Beth says, love keeps us afloat and self-control keeps us anchored. Love lends us liberality and self-control provides the boundaries within which love can be unleashed. Proverbs 25, 28 says, like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control. In the time of Proverbs, a city without walls is a city that is about to be plundered. Everything good in it taken somewhere else by someone else and the city is left broken. Kids, you know I love you. You need to listen to your parents. Stop. Stop arguing. Listen and learn. And even if you don't like what they are saying, you know, I'm 54 and I'm still learning this. So you should be way ahead of me by the time you're my age. You know, Jesus has given all of us this beautiful gift of life to be lived in love. And he has asked us to share it with the world who does not know it. And what we have to do is stay true to who God is, not who we want him to be. We may want him to get rid of the annoying neighbour down the street, but that's not who he is. We have to know that God knows what is ahead for us and he is planning for us to get through, to thrive and bring as many people with us, even the annoying ones, and to bring us home together. You know, listen, I was not gentle or self-controlled by a long shot. (laughs) Ask my family. Now, my number plate to this day has 150 on it. And when it was on my four-wheel drive and I was asked, what does 150 stand for? I would say 150 ways to run you over if you get in my way. Never get in the way of a mum with a car full of kids in the school run. Just a little heads up. (laughs) You know, I look at it now as a reminder that Jesus loves even me at least 150 ways. My dad is a mechanic. It is who he is. He loves to fix things. Sometimes I even break stuff just so he has something to fix when he comes to to our place. No, no, I didn't, Dad. I'm just joking. I know he's watching. You know, not only is Dad a mechanic, He has been a mechanic in a farming area. So you have to know how to fix everything from pumps on the river to trucks and tractors and all the machinery that is in between. In harvesting time, well, that's the busiest. It's hot and it doesn't end until the last crop has gone to market. And at this time, everyone is working hard. But back in the day when I was a kid, in the time of Holden Monaros and GT Falcons and CB radios, there weren't any refrigerated trailers. For people from the city, the trailer is the long thing on the back that all the stuff goes in. So the crops would be picked during the day and loaded onto the trucks and sent overnight, either to the Sydney or Melbourne markets, because it was cooler at night. And in a place that would stay between like 35 to 40 degrees all summer long, it was the only time to travel. Now, kids, back then, most homes only had one phone for the whole family. Like, I know, weird. How could that even work? Well, it did. And in our house, we had to ask if we could use it. You know, the phones didn't tell us who was ringing either, so it was always like a surprise. Weird, yeah, I know. I would rush to answer the phone hoping it was for me. 
But you know, I knew it was serious when the voice on the other end of the phone got straight to the conversation. You know, because country people, we don't do that. We are always up for a chat. And I'd say, I need to talk to your dad. And what I learned from an early age was that dad could tell what was going on from the sound of the motor. Was it safe for the driver to keep going? Did he need to stop? Should he turn the motor off? He knew, the driver knew there was something wrong and he knew that there was a lot at stake, damage to the load from the heat, damage to the truck, damage to the farmer's finance if the wrong choice was made. So a good driver would ease off the engine and cruise the truck as best he could to the nearest phone, which on the hay plains is like a long way from anywhere. And if he could find a phone on the side of the road that worked, hey kids, that's called a public phone booth. You know, as a, as a kid, you can tell when something is stressful and urgent. And each of these occasions was exactly that. I can remember grabbing the phone because they had a long lead then and running as far um, as that would take me and then stretching the handset, which was on a cord, as far as it would go so that Dad could take the call. So often this was really late at night and Dad would have just gotten home from working all day and then one of these calls would come in. Max, what should I do? He would listen. Listen to the sound of the engine. And sometimes he would say, hey, you're good to keep going. Get to such a place and, and do something then. Sometimes it was just instructions on how to fix over the phone. But you knew it was serious that when while Dad was on the phone, you heard a GT Falcon pull up out the front. So often the farmer and Dad would drive through the night, fix the truck on the side of the road so that the load could go to market. A year's worth of work on the back of a truck. Your dad was known for being faithful, for never giving up on making something right, for knowing what needed to be done and doing it so that damage wasn't done. You know, some drivers never listen to their engine and they drive them into the ground and wonder why they broke. Now, a good driver listens, takes care, fuels up on good stuff, eases up when the engine is under stress and stops and asks for help from the one who knows. Have you listened to yourself lately? What, what do you sound like? I was listening to myself the other day and I told myself, oh, Zan, just be quiet. Change the channel, girl. I just stop. This is monotonous. Just stop. Change the channel and play what God has for you. Now, John 10 says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Ephesians 5.19 says, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in Proverbs, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. You know, before this live stream, every Saturday morning, we host Playhouse for Kids between the ages of zero to six. And one of the songs they have been singing in this series has been, I want to know, I want to grow the fruit of the Spirit in me. What do you want? For me, the fruit of the Spirit is like this. It's choosing to know love. And the rest follows, choose love. Joy comes, peace rules, and be kind in the good things that we do and faithfully keep doing these things. And when life throws stuff at us to bump us out of love, duck. That's what, that's what happens when we live a spirit-filled life. We get good at this because God gives us the heads up or down when bad stuff is on the way. And if we aren't listening to him, how can we avoid the disasters we are walking towards, just like Jonah? He ran away from God into the storm. Let's get good at listening and doing. This week, 
I watched a man talk about the election in the States and he was not Donald Trump, but you would have thought he was. His actions and words were exactly the same. He had been filling up at the Trump fountain and he was overflowing. Be careful where you fill up. Jesus always fills up with love if you want him to. What do you want? I know he wants us more than his own life. He gave his life as a living sacrifice so we could see who God is and what love looks like. You know, it's beautiful and strong and the best place to be. And he calls us to do the same, God helping us take our everyday, ordinary life, our sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God has done for us is the best thing we can do for Him. And if we don't know what to do, do this. One simple thing at a time. Let's stop what we know is hurting others and hurting ourselves and put ourselves at the feet of Jesus and ask him to teach us how to live, love and serve. And then like our little car and skateboards, when we live how we are designed to, the kingdom of God will be seen on earth as it is in heaven. You know, that's something I want to be a part of. How about you? shepherd He goes before me Defender behind me I won't fear I'm filled with anointing
Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for showing us what love is like. Help us to get over ourselves and to let go of our hurt and our pride and sit at your feet and learn to love like you. Help us to want you more than anything else and help us to get so good at listening to your voice and responding and doing that we are never lonely again. Thank you for your church, Lord. Thank you for a place to be at home in your name. Thank you for friends. Jesus, we love you. May we always praise your name. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you've been blessed by the service. If you'd like to join a connect group or book a spot for next week, we'd love to see you. You can go and find the details in the chat. And we hope to see you same time next week.